Here is an EO Alive LeGrand story. So I uh, just reviewed the t uh, historic flooding in Union County since the early 1800s and uh, found that timeline on the internet. So I just, I've been studying that right now. Um, we have had historical flooding since the 1800s. Um, the, at one point it was 50,000 acres, um, but it's something that's happened every year, no matter what we've done with the creeks, whether we've not had them, or if we've changed creek, whether before we irrigated, after we irrigated, before there was agriculture, after. We've always had flooding in Union County. Um, when Union County was first inhabited the second, second time um, after the Native Americans, you know, you could not drive from Union to uh, La Grande because it was solid water. You had to go all the way by Somerville Cove to get to Union. And so, you know, historically, but then we put in the, ha we moved here. So we put in the roads and the railroad and that kind of thing. So, and then started agriculture. So, you know, it's gonna, we're gonna have to adjust and, um, and we need to adjust. Um, at some point in time in history, uh, dams were talked about. In fact, Congress approved dams for the um, Grand Round River and Catherine Creek at one point in time. Um, but uh, there was some conflict with fish and that kind of thing, and so uh, that was reversed. But um, through the years, many different solutions have been tried. Um, you know, new ditches have been made, dikes have been put up, that kind of thing. Um, but I really think that we do need to be um, looking again at some of those solutions and actually implementing more than just talking about it. The state ditch used to meander back and forth through the valley. You know, Island City used to be an island. And so, you know, it was surrounded by water. The state ditch, they went in and they basically straightened a lot of it and took around 50 miles off of the original Grand Ronde River. That's what the state ditch is. And so that would take up less farmland. People could, you know, have agriculture instead of swamps. And that's basically what the state, di the state ditch on the Grand Ronde was. If you drive between the Grand and Cove, you'll see many of the old areas where um, the Grand Ronde was. Um, a lot of them weren't filled in. And so they're just, you know, dry, uh, looks, looks like dry riverbed. Right along the highway, you'll be able to see that. Um, Baker County's got about three of them, an above ground reservoir. Wallowa County, obviously up in Wallowa County, they have, you know, the lake. Um, Umatilla, every, pretty much everywhere but Union County. I mean, we have some small reservoirs, um, you know, Thief Valley and, and some of those. But <clears throat> and some of them, like Wolf Creek, are definitely helping the North Powder area um, as far as storage and handling, you know, late, late season dry. Um, it also helps the fish. And so um, really this part of Union County, the upper Grand Ron, which can, is um, the Grand Ron River and Catherine Creek, is really the only um, area where we don't have above ground storage of any kind, where we can manage the water. As we look at those historic um, floods, in the spring, we have too much water. Many times, obviously we have drought years, but many times we have too much water, um, which in those historic um, information that we read, there were times where it killed all the salmon in the creeks because it was too much water. Um, and it hurts the people that are wanting to plant their crops. But if we could store it in a reservoir or some kind of storage off, you know, off site, um, it wouldn't necessarily have to be on the stream. It could be you know, diverted to side streams, um, even underground storage. Um, then we could bring that on later in the fall when it's too low and we can't irrigate and there's, it's too low for the fish. Well, then you can start letting water loose and then you, you know, you're handling it a little better and uh, people are able to use it year round. I just think in the past, um, we haven't had everybody at the table. I think that we've tried to do things, I, I wasn't there, but we've tried to do things kind of in silos. Um, so with this water place-based water planning we're doing now, we're inviting anybody that cares about water in Union County and the Upper Grand Ron to come to the meetings. We're talking about solutions, any solution that anybody has, any ideas, and we're trying to get everybody at the table that might be against it and let them get their word in and say why and what are their solutions to these problems or strategies so that we can find some solutions to this problem. Wallowa Lake has a dam. 
and they're actually getting ready to hopefully make it a little higher. Um, they have higher mountains, and so they have water longer than we do anyway, but um, gives us even more reason to need um, storage here. Um, Baker County has about three dams that they let out for irrigation later in the year, and it also helps the fish. And one of the problems with fish is they need cooler water in most cases, and so you know, if you can keep that water level a little higher, well then you have, you know, more fish that can come up and spawn. So it really, in my opinion, um, it helps all the different needs, including municipalities that may need, may be short in the fall. We only have Wolf Creek, which is, does help the North Powder area, but we have nothing in the upper ground round valley area. Well, as a convener of that, when I became commissioner, this was already kind of in the process. So as a convener, I have to stay neutral. Um, but personally, um, we are farmers, and so um, we raise cattle and hay, and we irrigate, and um, so we know how important irrigation is to making a living. And you know, I, one thing I always want to put out there is, farmers are environmentalists too. We care about the environment. We live off the environment, so we want to take care of it. And so um, we want to be on board with the other people that care about the environment. But we just want everyone on board so we can work out solutions that help all of us. But personally, I've lived here my whole life, five generations, um, agriculture. Um, so it's important to me, and I, and I think it's important to our economy in Union County. Historically, um, our emergency manager is telling me that we're getting them more often than we used to. They used to be maybe a 30-year. Now we're getting closer to a 10-year, every 10 years. Um, the flood we had this year was a little bit different than most. We had all that snow. You know, a lot of our flooding will come from ice jams and that kind of thing. But this one was a little later in the year. We had the snow and then it all melted off at the same time. So it was a little different time of year than we normally have. Had a lot more acreage that was hurt than we normally have. Um, we do have people, you know, that say, well, we, maybe we should take, you know, this dam out or not dam, but, you know, uh, on the north side of the valley, but we always want to be careful because we don't want to flood Elgin. We don't want Elgin to be in six feet of water. So any decision we make, we need to look at all the situation. And the other important thing is to look at the history. Why did they change the state ditch? Why did they do this? Why did they do that? Because we don't want to go back and make mistakes and revert back to something that we wish we wouldn't have done. So we really need to check into that history to make sure that when we move forward, we're actually solving a problem and not making a problem worse. I think that we, we need to be looking at solutions and strategies to make it better. You know, we can't change Mother Nature. We can't change, you know, the weather, but we can make it less damaging than it is now by managing. There are many crops that take at least two years before you can even harvest them, sometimes three. And so, you know, you've already, the farmer's already waited two years. He's put a lot of money into that crop and then maybe it's, this is gonna be the year where you can finally harvest it, now it floods. Um, so there's a third year that you're not gonna be able to harvest. And so, um, you know, it, might, it may not completely take that crop out, but for that year, you're not able to harvest it. So now you're out three years income for that area. So the perennial crops, it, I mean, a lot of times it won't wash them out or kill them, but it's definitely gonna hurt because those take a long time to become established and to bring money back and you know, we're like the grass seed capital. And so, you know, um, just think about it. People in other countries are using grass seed from Union County. Um, so we have some really nice farmland here and we need to be thinking about that because that's, that's a huge part of our economy, agriculture. I haven't heard estimates on how much money was lost in the spring flood, but um, estimates on the, how much property was flooded, it was in the tens of thousands. I don't know exactly how many, but there would be just, there would be one farmer that maybe lost eight to 10,000, and there were several farmers that lost a lot. And so it was, it was huge to our economy and to those specific people this year, and really to all of us. Um, when I think of agriculture, um, it goes way past the farmer out there. You know, he's, at, he's buying tractors, he's um, buying 4 H animals. He's teaching children. You know, there's so much more to it than just that farmer. He's hiring people. He's firing, hiring college kids and high school kids to come out and work. So um, the damage this year has been uh, probably some of the biggest in maybe over 50 years. So the place-based planning group 
um, Oregon Water Resources gave us um, some money to put together this group and ask the local people what they care about in water. And so instead of the state making decisions for us, letting the local people sit around as a group and decide what is important to us for our water issues and our water needs. And so that's what the place-based means. And um, so about two months ago, right after the flooding, um, I called our emergency manager in and we decided to ask our group to start listing solutions for this flooding. Whatever your idea is, throw it out. Nobody's gonna put you down or, may, or say you can't do that or anything like that. Let's just throw out the different ideas. So this is from our group. There's about 40 people that come and we would love to have more people anytime. And uh, this is, these are solutions that we talked about. Now, um, we'll worry about um, deciding which one we're gonna go with later, but right now these are what we're thrown out. Reservoir research. Talk to Baker County about flooding changes after reservoirs were built. You know, find about their history. Did it help? Did creating reservoirs for flood control um, work in their basin? Um, how did it work for Burnt River? The reservoir is managed for flood control. Um, above ground reservoirs for both flood control and storage. High elevation reservoirs. Storage in old sloughs on the valley floor. Maybe some of those areas where the creek wasn't filled in. Maybe we can store some uh, water in there. Those wet meadow storage. Um, storage water throughout the whole valley in multiple locations. And then the last thing we talked about was opening up Reinhardt Gap. These are suggestions that our group came up with. Um, opening up Reinhardt Gap would slow the water through the valley. A new levee system, Catherine Creek to Reinhardt. Levee setbacks, requiring the levees to be back a little further than they are now. And the state ditch, constructing a parallel flood channel to alleviate flooding issues. So a flood channel next to the state ditch that would maybe the water could be stored on the sides. Those were the suggestions that our place-based planning group came up with. Um, later on, we'll start talking about cost and what issues will that strategy fix if we did that? You know, what would it help? Would it help the fish? Would it help agriculture? You know, and decide uh, whichever decision we make on a um, solution, make sure it, it helps the most people possible. I always tell people, we live in Eastern Oregon. We don't plan just to plan. We plan because we want to implement. So our next plan is to implement those strategies. So we've already asked for 100,000 um, from the legislature, which we're hoping to find out on that soon for implementation. And then we know we're going to have to go to other funders to start getting the money together. And we know what it's, going to it's not going to happen overnight. It'll take probably a few years. But once we get a plan in place and we're all on board and we know no one's going to come and sue us to stop it, um, anyway, hopefully, you never know that for sure, then we need to implement that plan instead of just talk about it. So that'll be our next goal is to plan it, choose what the best you know, solution is, and then implement it. Um, on this place-based planning for the water group, I really want to invite people to come to these meetings. We have them once a month. Um, they're on our website, um, the dates, and it's from four to six once a month. And we really want you to be at the table if you care about water. We don't want someone later telling us, I wish I knew about these. We want you to come to those meetings and say what you want to say and give us your suggestions and ideas. And then at the end, when we start to decide what we're going to implement, if you've come and signed up with our MOU and come to two of the last four meetings, you will be one of the people that vote to decide what issue or what solution we implement. So it's important that you're at the table. I am Donna Beveridge and I am the County Commission Chair for Union County along with uh, Commissioner Anders and Commissioner Scarfo and uh, enjoying the job of making sure that our county is successful. I'm the liaison to business development, so to me that's a passion that I already had before I became commissioner and that's where I want to keep going.